I have one goal for the end of this talk. I want all of us to take our masks off. Stay with me on this. Now, being an Indian student, I've had to face excessively high expectations. The pressure that comes along with it is overbearing, too much to handle all by yourself. Despite the fact that I was a social butterfly, I found myself crying almost every single day in my mother's arms, feeling helpless and confused. My mother and I, well, we're a lot like each other. It was always hard for me to see her upset, and she'd get just as upset and concerned about me crying. As a child, seeing her upset was heartbreaking and difficult for me to understand. I never wanted to worry my parents, and I really did not want to cry all the time. And so, I pretended. I wore a mask every day. And it turns out that I wasn't the only one. 800,000 people. Our world is losing around 800,000 people every year due to suicide. And that equates to one person every 40 seconds. Now these numbers are tragic. The mental health crisis is real and present. But how did we get here? Stigma. Stigma has been a major contributor to the mental health crisis. It profoundly changes how people feel about themselves and their perception of the way others see them. Stigma affects people at every stage of their life. It affects them when they're struggling, when they're healing, and even when they've recovered. The impact of stigma is twofold. Public stigma the reaction that society has towards people with mental illnesses, and self-stigma, the reaction that people with mental illnesses have towards themselves. Now, growing up in an Indian household, stigma was ever-present. There actually exists an age-old social precept that most of us live by. Lo kya kahenge, or what will people say? This cuts across the lines of gender, region, socioeconomic status, and religion. It reigns supreme in regulating people's decisions. It's the strong belief that you'll invite judgment and negative attention if you share your vulnerabilities. Now, over the span of five months across eight Indian cities, the Live, Love, Laugh Foundation conducted a study to explore the levels of sensitivity and stigma associated with mental health. Now, in the study, majority of the participants described people with mental illnesses as talks to themselves, depressed, crazy, mad or stupid, retarded and irresponsible. Majority of the participants believed that people with mental health illnesses must not be given any kind of responsibilities and that they lack self-discipline and willpower. Now, looking at this, I'm reminded of how much progress there is yet to be made. And I believe that this is because of fear. Fear and misunderstanding often leads to stereotyped and prejudiced views about mental health. And this results in feelings of hopelessness and shame in those struggling. And this creates a cycle of stigma that results in a serious barrier to diagnosis and treatment. Now, sometimes we are unaware of how we may be contributing to this cycle. We let our unconscious biases shape our perspectives and decisions. We can't even see the world without filtering it through our lens of assumptions. But that does not mean that we are hardwired to be that way forever. Now, part of the problem is the lack of awareness and education around the topic of mental health. Now, this is more of a problem in developing nations where lack of personal responsibility is considered to be a cause of mental health issues. And one of the easiest ways to solve this is to talk about it. When we talk about it and when we talk about it openly without any kind of reservations, we effectively remove that stigma. 
Did you know that in India, one of the most interesting causes of mental health issues is, and wait for this, is demonic possession. But fear not, it's quickly treated with an exorcism. It was always believed that mental health issues were caused by an angry god or demonic possession or witchcraft. Interventions such as trephining, exorcisms, and execution, they were not uncommon. And although we strayed far from some of these practices, viewing mentally ill people as possessed still exists today. And being aware of how people view mental health, not just in India, but in many other countries, I felt there was only one thing for me to do. It wasn't easy wearing a mask every single day. It was hard to navigate through a period of confusion, helplessness, and crying. It was something I battled with, and it was time that I had to accept it. Many people still believe that young adults do not face any kind of mental health issues, and the myth that mood swings are just a part of growing up. But in reality, 50% of mental health issues are established by the age 14 and 75% by the age 24. 70% of children and adolescents have not received appropriate interventions at a sufficiently early age. And this makes me wonder, what if there was early intervention? What if this topic was not taboo and was openly talked about? I was well aware that I wasn't the only one who was feeling the same way. There were other students who were probably going through the same troubles as I did. I still remember being seated in my English class and everybody was paying attention to a teacher as one would. I was 12 at the time and what I did not know was that that day was going to bring about a massive change in my life. There was a heaviness that I carried with me into class. My classmates didn't seem to notice, but my teacher, despite my attempts to hide behind a smile, pulled me aside and listened. She encouraged me to share my feelings. I felt heard and understood, and suddenly I didn't feel so alone. She taught me that sharing my feelings with a person I trust might be the start of my healing. And I carried this lesson with me throughout all my relationships. I started opening up to my parents, and once they understood what I was going through, simply telling them that I was sad and I didn't know why I was enough. My dad, who's the type to face situations fearlessly and had a solution for every problem, he motivated me to find the core reason for my feelings and helped me through some extremely difficult days. My mom, took out time to attentively listen to me and provide me with any kind of support that I needed. My parents worked hard to understand me and treated everything with the utmost love, care and respect. So it turns out it wasn't just the high expectations and the pressure that was weighing on me. It was the feeling of being alone. And the solution was easier than I'd think. I simply needed to talk about it. Today, I can firmly say that I am a changed person and these experiences have only made me more brave and more empathetic. Asking for help was never being weak, but it surely was being wise. If the stigma associated with this topic was abolished, and if we engaged in open dialogue, maybe we wouldn't feel so helpless and alone and instead we would be equipped with strategies to deal with it. Being mentally healthy is a need. Something that is essential to our survival. And it's time we learn to prioritize it. But how? Learn about mental health. Learn how anxiety and depression present themselves. Be open to people's experiences and the struggles they might be facing. Be kind and compassionate. Treat people with dignity and respect. Talk to your loved ones. Talking to someone you know, whether friend or family, can help relieve some of that anxiety and stress. When you feel like you're the 
only person who's going through something, talking to someone will help make you feel heard, understood, and you won't feel as alone. And most importantly, you will help reduce the stigma. By sharing your feelings to a person, you are indulging in a conversation on how to deal with it and finding the best solution. As Russell Wilson once said, if we start being more honest about our pain, our anger and our shortcomings, instead of pretending like they don't exist, maybe we'll leave the world a better place than we found it. Remember, you're not alone. Break the stigma. And as for Lokya Kahenge, don't worry about it. People will keep talking. What matters is you. You are important. Your mental health is important. So let's just all take our masks off for the greater good.